Pretend like you just just saw it for the first time. <laughs> Nailed it. Last week I shared some video game highlights from the five count playing the Tesla Arcade. And if you haven't had a chance to watch that, go back and check that video out. Those guys are hilarious and it was great hanging out with them. But before we got into the gaming, we had a little time for a test drive. So Tun from the five count got behind the wheel and he's an auto enthusiast and current Mercedes owner and had never driven a Tesla before. So uh, it was cool to get his first impressions. They're not all positive, but I think it's important to hear uh, people's perspe perspectives, their expectations, and uh, see where there's room to improve. So uh, enough me talking about it. I'll come back and give some final thoughts at the end. But for now, let's get into it. So this is Ton from the Five Count. I'm here. Uh, first impressions of this Tesla. Um, I will tell you right away, the handle is super annoying to me for uh, one big reason. So first of all, it seems a little fumbly the first time you use it. I was like pushing and then trying to figure that out, which I think in time I would get very used to push with your thumb and grab with your fingers of course but my first thought is um i have a four-year-old daughter or even if you had your hands full say things in this hand and then this hand was accessible and you had to open this and suddenly you have kind of what feels very fumbly to me so i enjoy the smooth look that that creates but i don't understand why you would design something to sort of only work one way um it just seems odd to me something that stuck out that I'd like to point out. Otherwise it looks pretty cool. Um, I see we're implementing these cameras on the new uh, Cybertruck. I saw they were trying to use this camera only like for the side view. Um, is this something, uh, Brian, you can tell us later, I guess, or maybe I'll witness it if I drive it. Does this camera get activated on a turn signal? Uh, no, but you can, you can bring it up anytime. Okay. And when you back up, cool. you can have it activated. All right. And I, I think early on, these wheels are kind of cool to me, but I've also always sort of thought that most of the Tesla wheel designs are kind of lame. And I thought that was because of aerodynamics previously. Is that still the case now? or These, these wheel covers are because of aerodynamics. Um, a lot of people pop them off or will like plastic dip them. Yeah. Um, so them so they're cool. all black. Yeah. Um, that makes them look a little sharper. I'm not a big wheel style guy. Yeah. So if they look okay, it's fine to me. Yeah. These don't do a ton for me, but they're, you know, I don't think they're terrible. So yeah. I don't have any immediate plans to. to do As you can see from my car, it's, I like a good wheel. Dusty. Dusty. I enjoy a good wheel. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then you were looking at the front earlier. Do you have any thoughts? No, on that? I think it's cool that it's that it's there. I like the extra space. Um, it's actually a little bit smaller than what I thought it was going to be. Uh, the Model X the is a little bit the, the, the vehicle in general, um, so that helps. You know, you have that little extra space there. This is a little bit smaller than the X, right? Yep. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's do it. Let's do this thing. I'm excited. I assume there's a fob, so you get in, it understands that you're in here. How do you, quote unquote, start the vehicle? There's there's no fob. Oh, there in, isn't a fob. In this one, it's just, it recognizes your phone. Okay. Through Bluetooth. So when I'm nearby, I can just hop right in. There is a key card as a backup. Um, to get in, you uh, press it against the B pillar. Okay. And that opens it. And then you need to put it like, on the center console to start the vehicle. And but otherwise, am I am I technically started right now? Yeah. Once you put your foot on your, the brake, um, it will start. So I have pin to drive enabled because my daughter likes to play in here and crawl around. So now you're good to go. So uh, now you're on good the, to steal the car. Yep. Oh, right here. Yep. Oh, dude, just like our Mercedes, actually. Yeah. Stock shift, just like that. We're ready to go. Dust, ready to are go. you ready? I think. Okay. Oh, do I look like I'm ready? Am I yes, okay? Yes, dude, you are okay. How's my hair? You are with me. You look fantastic. I love this so much. Okay, so um, 
Brian, just so you know, oh, we got some regen on big time, don't we? Yep. Uh, um, I always forget to tell people that. My only electric experience so far is riding. So if anybody's watching this, uh, I also have a very small YouTube channel called Two Wheel Ton, and I do a bunch of ride and reviews there. And I did a ride and review on the Harley Livewire. Uh, which oh, is really? all electric motorcycles. So that's the only um, other full electric. That's a that's amazingly strange to get used to. Um, that's the only full electric vehicle I've driven aside from this. So I really actually enjoyed that. Um, but that thing didn't have a lot of regen. Um, but you could ramp it up. So the lower sort of power setting that you chose, um, the more regen it had. And then the high, like I kept it in sport mode the whole time so I could just rip on it and then it kind of used less regen. Um, so this experience of regen, I'm assuming for most people, would be very strange in the beginning. Um, it's also really yeah. weird that the, like, because that's a, that's a huge feeling of braking. Like, probably to Dusty that feels like I'm hitting the brakes pretty good and I have not touched the brakes other than right there. Yep. this entire trip which is really interesting and you can set it to different levels like i have it on like standard regen but you can you can put it on lower okay a lower setting if you want it a little easier or if you have, or if it's winter and you don't want all that regen on ice yeah slick roads yeah you can turn that off or not off but down considerably it's also really strange to me that um the turn signal doesn't give a definitive click down and stay there like traditional turn signals have for years. Like you just yeah, kind of press that, it a further amount and it's on. That threw me off in the beginning. And that was a little different for me coming from the S2. Cause wow, that regen is crazy. Uh, you should see regen on ice. <laughs> this is really interesting. So I'm already realizing how much I need to... Uh, my braking, so the braking is metered by my throttle throttle control is what I feel like already. In my mind, I need to understand that I'm metering my braking with throttle control rather than moving my foot to the brake. That's really interesting. That like changes driving dynamics compared to what you're used to in cars completely. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So yeah. I'm sorry. This this was that's different in the Model S or in previous models. You don't it like does a definitive click for the turn signal. Yeah. Okay. So it's again one of those things like the door handles. It takes a few days to get used to, and then now I've had the car for about a month, so okay. I'm pretty used wow. to it. That regen just throws me off big time. That's like very very, very counterintuitive. That was not my mom. Uh, another really interesting thing to me is um, the viewing picture of your rear view mirror is much larger than the actual viewing space I have through the rear window. Um, I don't know if you can somehow pick that up, but it's... Uh, I can't. It's like the window <laughs> is this big in the rear view, but the rear view is like that much, you know, viewing space yeah. on the mirror. That's interesting. So, oh, Dust, uh, okay. have you been looking at that? That's kind of cool. The it car? was showing like other cars too. It sees the other cars. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. Were you gonna say something about the rear view? Yeah. So you see that circle that's under the car display there? Boom. Um, I can just use that. That's why. Yeah. And Who so cares? there you see how the repeaters on the side down wow. below are those. Yeah. Sorry about this regen, guys. I am not slamming on the brakes. I just come on. I'm not used to regen. Brian, is your name Brian, or is that your car's name too? Uh, the car's name is Jake. Cool. For the Blues Brothers. Does this thing have ludicrous mode? No. Okay, I've heard all about ludicrous mode. Let's just go to 55, 60 real quick. God, that, see that is the thing that sold me on the live wire. The instant torque is so enjoyable for a person who likes acceleration. Um, I grew up riding motorcycles. I've owned some pretty fast ones. I then was like a hot rodder in high school and building engines and um, drag racing and stuff for fun. And 
so acceleration is fun to me and the electric vehicles do that extremely well why don't you go straight here because you have a red light you can nail it oh you um, want me to nail it from a stop you're saying yep i don't even need to use brakes this thing is stopping before the light without even touching the brakes that's amazing Wow. Um, you can turn off the center or the rear view now if you want. That woman's eating over there. Let's get a what shot is, of that. What is some other... Oh, oh you got green. green. Oops. Okay, ready, Dust? Nail it. No! That's floored. I don't think you... Did you put it to the floor right away? No. Okay. Yeah, I was like, that didn't feel quite wow. as fast. But, but still, that's but still pretty... Good. That's fairly impressive. I could do one more. So, you don't, I mean, I guess the weird thing to me is like, there is no break-in period. Look at it's, that torque. It's just whatever, right? It's just electric motors doing their thing. Yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, so this is dual motor, but it's not performance. And only so, the performance model has that ludicrous mode, right? Um, Are you going to well, that porta potty? Well, yes. Uh, that's where we all go. There's nobody uh, coming, so I'm going to be a little bit uh, yeah. ridiculous here. Are you ready, Dust? No, I Are wasn't ready last on? time. Are you ready right now? We're stopped. Now I'm going to floor it. <laughs> that definitely is something. Like, you can feel that big time. Yeah. That 0 to 60 <laughs> is still really good. With like three full grown men in here. I mean that's good. That's quick. Yeah, I think I think this one does four point eight seconds. That's um, plenty. The performance I could do for two thousand bucks, I could do a perf uh, uh, acceleration boost, and that would get it down to four point three. Okay. And then I think the performance models do it in three five or something like that and then the, the high end the model s and model x new ones will do it in two and two uh, five or two plus seven in, no like two two wow and then i thought the, only that roadster or whatever does it in two two the the roadster is going to be under two wow and the new flat plus that'll be out hopefully by the end of the year will be under two as well. That's crazy. So, um, yeah, I don't, I would love to have that, but I don't need it. Like this, this, I, I'm completely okay with this being a, uh, uh, a family car. Oh yeah. You know, and just, yeah, it's, fa it's plenty fast for that. It really is. It's got plenty of power. Does this have a uh, heated steering wheel? Yes. Where's it at? Um, if you break the, press the fan icon. Oh, it's separate uh, in uh, here. On the left hand side, there's another tab there. Yep. So if you. I wonder why it's so much further away than just the heat, the, it's the seats, I mean. That's kind of uh, annoying. You can also do it with voice control. Oh. So you could just say, you know, press the right uh, button there and say, turn seat heater on or turn. Oh, it's recognizing it already. Okay. Cannot understood. <laughs> the seats. I Turn I passenger was a heat seat heater off. Thank you. No, just that one, not both. Tom, all that torquing it kind of made me car sick. Don't be a wuss. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hardwired into my system. You're telling you know. Tesla it's kind of hard. Can you relax? Listen, Tesla, mind your business, and I feel a little queasy from all the torquing. <laughs> yeah, see? Turn on driver's side seat heater. Nice. Thank you, Tesla. Appreciate it. So, this is interesting that it has the lights even on there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like, that's kind of cool that it has it, but... I don't really understand the purpose because I, I, um, I'm assuming you're not going to watch that while you're driving. This is part of the full self-driving visu visualization. Oh. Um, you can turn that off if you want. 
Um, eventually, they say this will be um, be able to basically drive itself. Mm -hmm. And so this is part of the roadmap to getting there. And so to, it's kind of just for now to get you an uh, to give you a sense of what the car is seeing. So it's kind of like building a comfort level of, so you know what it's, what it's good at, what it's bad at. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Because obviously at this stage you still have to monitor everything, um, but it's good to, to kind of have that visual cue of like, oh no, it sees that car, mm -hmm. it sees that lane, it sees um, the stoplights. And when I have autopilot on, it will come to a stop at those stoplights. So like coming down here, down 169, when I got in Jordan, those stoplights were red. And so it started slowing down saying, and it gave me a, a notice saying, stopping for traffic control at 500 feet. And then you see it. And then if it turned green, then I just tap the accelerator to let it know it's okay and then it would proceed through, so. Interesting. Yeah, so right now it's, it's kind of, you're working with the car and knowing what it's seeing and, and stuff, but yeah, like I said, you can turn that stuff off or not use it depending on how you want to. That regen is hard to get used to. Um, so, a couple of questions. Do you know the logistics of how the heater works in this car? Like, how does the actual, I'm hearing this low um, kind of noise and it's my, stomach. my first reaction is like, is there something wrong with the car or is there like a super bassy song that's turned down really low, but then you said it's probably the heat pump. Yeah. Um, wh wh what do you mean? Why does it require a pump? Is it not just an electric heater that's like a fan needs a blow it, it, it circulate the old or? ones they did uh, an electric heater but those aren't as efficient and so when using your heat or your air conditioning would drain the battery faster mm. and so heat pump is basically like how your refrigerator works or how um, like an air conditioner works mm -hmm. um, where instead of you know I don't know like I've had it explained to me millions of times and like watched a lot of videos on it and still wrapping my head around why it works doesn't make any sense but okay. basically it takes cold air which is just a different level of hot mm -hmm. from a physics standpoint and uses a compressor to make that hotter or colder depending on what you want in the cabin. Yeah, see the trip. It's a replay of what we just did, Tom. It's like playing it's Ridge great, Racer. Yeah, it's very greatest cool. hits. But you can set that like in a parking lot like this. If you're going to church, a bunch of people park next to you, you come back and you find a big door ding, you'll have a sentry mode event that will have saved it. And so you can either see who did it or what their license plate number was. Um, a lot of people who have like keyed cars have been caught because you know you got your their face in the camera mm -hmm. um, and sometimes like they'll key your car when they were parked next to you and then drive off and the camera's got their license yeah. plate. Yeah. So insurance cool. companies are gonna love this. I'm gonna give you some other initial impressions. Go for it. Uh, this is pretty cool. I like that full glass ceiling. It's also really uh, cool that I don't, there's some kind of coating here that makes the sun not super offensive mm -hmm. um, and not distracting, but it looks really nice. Uh, the rest of it, I'll be honest with you. Tell me a quick price point of this car. What'd you pay for this car? I'm gonna have to check what the actual base price was. Uh, it's around, I wanna say, 52 to 54 yeah. base price. So uh, we paid about 60 because of like the full self driving package as an extra so software add on. So I have to be, um, I have to be totally honest in that kind of price range. 
Um, this does not feel high end to me in here. And I, I would expect more from this interior at that kind of price range. Um, this stuff, I mean, the, the steering wheel feels nice. This looks super simple to me. This doesn't, this looks like um, I could see a steering wheel like this in a Camry or even this, like this feels nice. I know everybody talks about soft touch materials, but it's, it's still like standard plasticky rubber stuff that I would see in any Asian car that's 30 grand and below. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I feel like that. Another thing, um, it feels really tight on the road. I like the steering feel. I'm sure that's all electric. Uh, my Mercedes is actually electric power steering as well, so I'm pretty used to that. Some electric power steering, they, people don't like it. Some, they do really well. This one is done really well. Um, I enjoy that. But uh, it was much noisier than I expected. Like, this is an electric car, so one of the things that I expect is I should have, like, an ultra-silent ride. I should have like, like this most silent possible, in my opinion, mm -hmm. if I'm getting full electric. Because part of that is like, I don't have a gasoline engine making a bunch of noise, you know, and a transmission doing a bunch of things and transfer cases and whatever. I don't have any of that making noise. I just have an electric motor that can be very silent. And I have, I had much more road noise than expected, especially on the highway. I, um, almost like wind noise as well. Um... And that low, that heat pump thing throws me off. It's like, well, wh why do I have a, this weird roll, rumbling noise coming from the front end when I have an electric car? Like, I mm -hmm. shouldn't, I, my, my um, expectation, I guess, it, from a Tesla, when I, why, why I say it as Tesla is because I know that they are pr pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. And it, I think to most people, the Tesla is like sort of the, the, the high end of what you can get in an electric vehicle mm -hmm. right now. And they've been doing it longer than most, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, so I just, ex I just expected something a little bit different than what it is for that mm -hmm. price. So gut reaction is like, I would not pay, I would never pay that money for a, a brand new one. I'm a used guy. So like I, we briefly messaged before, I really like that Model X, but I've never been in one. Mm -hmm. I've never driven one. I've never seen this interior kind of stuff. And, um, but the, the, the Model the, S and Model X are more, and I think the new ones they're coming out with more, cause that's been a common knock is like people don't, People don't feel like it's it's luxury materials, yeah. Um, and so I think that's that's a big push with the the new versions. They're refreshing them right now, yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see with that, um, you know, what they end up doing with that. But yeah, it's it's interesting what, where where your expectations are and, and stuff. And and the Model Three and the Model Y are kind of the the budget, you know. Uh, the Model Three, I think, starts now at uh, thirty-nine thousand. So not cheap, but you know, their big thing is like, well, the total cost of ownership when you're not buying gas is you know about the same as a Camry. Yeah, that's what so I'm so yeah, that initial price and the the amount you have to get the loan for is mm -hmm. a more luxury vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, your overall cost of owning it is going to be less so yeah um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next five to ten years um i will be way more on board when solid state battery technology is more prevalent and is happening and and range gets up there and all that yeah, stuff yeah they can know. do that um yeah like i was saying with range you, you asked about that and i never finished answering um so the the range in this is 326 uh, EPA, but like in your gas car, you know, if you're doing highway speeds with the heater or, or uh, mm -hmm. air conditioning on, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to get 30 miles to the gallon or yeah. whatever you get. If you're flooring uh, it all the time, it's going to... Yeah, so like um, we drove out to Wisconsin Dells last weekend, and I'm not sure, the, t the total trip there and back was 518 miles and we could have done the trip there and back 
only charging once each time for 15 minutes. So, um, you know, that's pretty with, good. With my daughter in the car, with my wife, we got to stop for bathroom breaks anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it was plenty for that. Mm -hmm. um, we did end up stopping two times and I charged both times just because that's my mindset is like charge every chance you get mm -hmm. because the last car we had didn't have very good range mm. or comparatively. Um, and this car is far more efficient. You know, I, I was at 88% uh, when I left home and we're now at a 52%. And I drove highway speeds all the way down here. We just floored it a couple times, you know, and I still have plenty to get back home. So, uh, you know, and, and this is a pretty big day trip mm -hmm. for most people. I would love to see, like, ranges get over uh, 400 miles, you know, usable, like, real world. Yeah. But I don't know... I don't know if that's going to happen because the, the kind of constraint is how fast they can produce batteries. Mm -hmm. And so if you're making a bunch of 400 mile vehicles, when people are buying the 300 mile vehicles, you can make a lot more of those 300 mile vehicles, you know, instead of 400. So I don't see the three and why getting to 400 real soon but i think the s is already over three or over 400 hmm. and might be over five by the end of the year but yeah the technology is just ramping so fast and yeah efficiencies are going up and you know i, I was talking about the the model s and x refresh part of the reason they're doing that is to push the technology but also other people are coming into the the luxury EV space and so it's kind of made Tesla go okay we mm -hmm. gotta actually up our game on the interior mm -hmm. and up our game on some of these other elements where because they've got such a technology lead that now that uh, like Porsche is upping their game Lucid is another uh, EV that's gonna launch this year yeah is kind of going after that Mercedes and mm -hmm. I think Mercedes just announced a, a new EV, too, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And so that kind of forced Tesla to go, okay, let's regroup and, like, get back to the top. And yeah. so, but that's good. That's what needs to happen to keep everything improving. Mercedes made a B-Class a small, like a smaller hatchback. Mm -hmm. And you still can get them. You can actually get them very cheap even in the U.S. Uh, but everyone that drives one and like does a review you can see them over in europe they're doing like this video here and reviewing them and they all say like it's amazing mm. they love this car it's a little all electric vehicle but uh the downside is and it seems as though mercedes did this on purpose it doesn't charge very fast it's like oh. the first generation technology as far as charging mm -hmm. and then the range is is low so, sort of like on purpose because mercedes didn't want it to take off and everyone to know you know they yeah. wanted you to not kind of know about it until they perfect it or get their technology to a level where it will be accepted in a different way and be much more money paid for it i assume yeah, and I think there's, um, you know, the, the restrictions in Europe for emissions are a lot higher with s sooner deadlines. In the EV world, they call them compliance cars, mm -hmm. where somebody will make a... And uh, Tesla actually helped Toyota with an early version of the RAV4 mm -hmm. electric. Um, because Cal in California, they needed something. Mm -hmm. And so they ha hired Tesla to put batteries in the RAV4 um, for one of the generations of them. Hopefully we're kind of past that stage and now it's like, okay, let's get fast charging, you know, for, cause you know, people don't have all day to sit at chargers yeah. or, you know, want to spend an hour at a charger. Like I said, our, on our trip, we could have done it with two 15 minute stops mm -hmm. and that's, you know, faster than we as a family could yeah. get our bathroom breaks and stuff yep. done so that's very cool um, it's very good yeah 
Are you familiar with the Honda E? The little, it's a little guy with a little circle yeah, uh, headlights. headlights? Yes. I yeah. really like the look yeah. of that thing. That would be cool. I'm more interested in an all-electric vehicle in that realm. If I could get away with like a small car that just like it charged fast and it gave me enough to like go to work and and get groceries and whatever and i didn't have to worry about trips or any garbage mm -hmm. if i could have that like just that car was like dad's go to work car yeah that'd be the, awesome uh, have you seen the electric mini no they've got now i think it's relatively well priced sure um but i've heard they're super fun mm. and have not the greatest range, not the greatest charging, but if you're charging it at home, and I've heard they're super fun to drive, though. Yeah. You know, like minis are. Yeah, and I bet. Dusty, do you want to drive? No, thanks. I feel sick from tons of joyriding. <laughs> the only odd part about the driving is that regen, man. Like, try, like learning to meter that after years of... Yeah. Of just being able to like kind of freewheel when you let off the gas mm -hmm. is that's like totally different. That'd probably take me a couple of days to get yeah. more like finesse there. I would yeah, say. Yeah, and you you learn it with you learn it how you're comfortable, and then you also learn when you have passengers how to not make them sick too. Yeah. So, so it's kind of totally. a learning curve with each way, like. Um, like I'm pretty comfortable having a pretty heavy regen and then when my wife and daughter are in the car I need to like feather it even more yeah. so I'm not jolting them around. Mm -hmm. Well that's where we left off before getting into the gaming portion. I really want to thank Tun for sharing his experience and impressions. It's always good to get those new perspectives. And if you haven't seen the gaming portion, go back and check out last week's video. I also want to thank Dusty for putting up with that enormous amount of arm strain holding the camera that whole time. I didn't expect it would be that long. So again, thank you guys. And before we go, I just want to touch on a couple of the points he brought up. Initially, while looking at the door handles, he had said how awkward it seemed and that it would take a while to get used to. Well, a couple days after that interview, I was leaving the grocery store, had my hands full, and did that kind of backwards grab of the handle. And I'm used to it now, so I wanted to show how I do that. Basically, it's a switch from an overhand grab to an underhand grab. Instead of using my thumb, I use my index finger and pull with the rest of the fingers. Pretty easy, but it does take a week or so for it to become natural, and now I don't even think about it. Another comment I wanted to make was about the luxury appointments of a vehicle in this price range. And this is something that's super subjective, so I'm not trying to suggest his perspective is wrong and mine is right. But I'm a very uh, function first person, and um, some of the high end luxury appointments in some vehicles end up with these quilted patterns and, and crazy things that to me kind of look like a grandma's bathroom. But it's a matter of perspective and frankly that's the good news of higher end EVs coming out and people like Lucid, Mercedes and, and Porsche making EVs. It gives people of all tastes different options. To me, the luxury of Tesla lies in the functionality, in the user interface, the range, speed of charging, and of course the supercharger network, being able to get where you need to go. And the supercharger network is an advantage that you don't really realize until you start using it or using an alternative. And Tesla can definitely improve in some of these luxury areas. And I'm really hoping with the Plaid refresh of the Model S and Model X, they do those kind of things that appeal to those luxury buyers. But as I said earlier in the video, I don't see those things coming to the Model 3 and the Model Y. My thinking is that they're going to try to keep the price of those vehicles down as low as they can and make them have a much more mass appeal. An analogy I often think about is how my home is much smaller and less opulent than a castle of a king 400 years ago. But I have running water and electricity, and so there are different gauges of what you see as luxury. 
we may be hitting a point in vehicle design and expectations that transforms what the meaning of luxury really is. And it's really exciting to be able to witness this EV adoption and transformation. Regardless of where you come in on that spectrum, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I really want to say another big thank you to Ton and Dusty from the Five Count for joining me over the last couple weeks. And be sure to check out the FiveCount.com and the Five Count YouTube page, Ton's Two Wheeled Ton YouTube page as well, and see some of the great stuff they got there. Uh, those guys are hilarious, and obviously there's merch and everything too. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this, feel free to like, share, subscribe here, of course, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you and have a great day.